Indian solar energy sector has been growing rapidly in the past few years, majorly due to government's initiatives such as tax exemptions and subsidies. Today, the solar power has an install capacity of 9.84 megawatt, which is about less than 0.1% of the total installed renewable energy of India's currently installed renewable energy. India has been ranked 7th worldwide for solar photovoltaic cell production and has secured 9th rank in solar thermal power generation. This capacity is growing rapidly due to the entry of various private players in manufacturing of solar energy equipment and the number is expected to increase rapidly with the gradual expansion of time. to Yelly Times TV. Today we have with us Mr. Abhishek Dabas who is the CEO of Zolt Energy. So come let's have a quick chat with him and let us see what he has in store for this industry. Hello sir, welcome to the show. So uh, can you give us some brief introduction about your company Zolt Energy? So Zolt Energy is a, a solar power company which is completely focused on the residential market. Our aim is to make it easy for people to adopt solar energy and when we say easy, easy as in just like subscribing to a power plant, a broadband connection or a Tata Sky connection, that kind of ease is what we aim to bring it, bring to the market. Now uh, today the biggest challenge for people is that solar has an upfront cost component to it. It can, uh, you know, the cost of adopting this can range from multiple, uh, from 2.5 lakhs to, you know, 25 lakhs. So what we do there is we help them enable, uh, so what we do is uh, we help them make it easier for, for them by giving them options like easy EMI option where they can uh, pay in 12, 12 equal monthly installments or they can also uh, go for a power plan subscription. Uh, when we talk about power plan subscription, we, what we are saying is that we'll install the solar system on your rooftop and we'll charge you a monthly uh, fee for the power that we are selling you. And which means that you can adopt clean energy, save some money without any upfront cost as such. Focusing only in the residential market also enables Zolt uh, to find out solutions where uh, you know other people think they don't exist uh, because uh, this market is a bread and butter. We have put solar in places where you know you uh, imagine that they're like temporary uh, structures and temporary rooftops, and we have you know enveloped them and. Uh, if somebody has has the willingness to go solo, we do our best to help them do help them do, uh, do that. Now, uh, if you look at the government policies today, the government has done a lot in the last couple of years uh, from the national level by setting the overall uh, you know guidelines initially from 100 gigawatts to now 175 gigawatts, and also setting up the right policy framework. Now, most of the states in India have come up with firm solar policies on net metering or uh, at least they're in the you know draft stages. Policy implementation has also begun in states like Delhi, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra. So what we mean by net metering is that anybody today can fill up a form and ask his power company to give him a power banking facility. When we say power banking facility is that when he generates full power from his rooftop and let's say he's not at his home or the school is shut for two months during summers, at that time, the power does not go waste. So he sells the power to his power company and he gets credits for the, for the same. When he comes back to home uh, during the night, first he consumes those credits, they are debited, and then the discom starts to bill it. So this is done on a monthly basis. The policy varies slightly from different, in different state, but uh, you know overall, uh, this takes away the wastage from the ecosystem. Be it a school, which was earlier shut off during two months and then you know that was primary production time during summers 
or be it houses where most of the, most of the consumption, uh, be it ACs or anything, it, it happens during the night. So yeah, so the government has done uh, done a lot uh, on that front. Implementation has lagged slightly. Uh, you know, we are always optimistic. Be it a startup like Zolt Energy or be it you know, government setting targets like 100 gigawatt, which which feels like very difficult to attain initially. But over a period of time, when you know when we hit the sweet sweet spot, right? Today uh, we have completed our 15 installations in the last two and a half months. The scale hits when people start seeing things in performance. Now, uh, when bigger projects start coming in, the government's vision will start getting realized. When you know uh, smaller projects start showing up on a map, which is what we want to do. So all our systems come with online monitoring. So you know you can open your, uh, your iPhone or Android app, and you can actually see uh, generation from our plants in Delhi and Hyderabad. And this is not not just for our customers; this is for the public. Uh, so, when people can see that their neighbors are saving, you know, saving money and creating, you know, uh, so much carbon, uh, reducing so much carbon footprint, it it creates the right amount of momentum to tip it over uh, and create the volumes that are required to reach the target. Today, solar is financially viable. It's viable for industrial sector. It's viable for commercial. It's also viable for residential. Residential has specific challenges, but when we talk about uh, because you know everybody wants to use the, use their roof space uh, more efficiently. They want multiple use cases. They want to you know dry their clothes. So therein uh, you know you have to customize a lot of things around that, which is what, which is what we are specializing in today. And I think we are doing a pretty decent job with it. Uh, so what are the new technological innovations that are happening in the solar sector from your end? Uh, so uh, so when we started Zolt Energy. In, in January 2014, uh, what we realized was, you know, it was early days in solar, and especially in the rural market, uh, because it was still expensive. Uh, a lot of overpromising was happening in the market, you know, uh, and because of that, rural, especially, you know, people who needed these battery systems were losing faith in solar energy. That's where we, you know, st we started uh, Zolt Energy, and the first technical innovation we did was uh, we developed a smart meter which would measure the production of solar and which will also, also measure the consumption of the household. So what it would do is, it will not just measure the production, but in case you are abusing the system unintentionally, for example, because these off-grid systems are with batteries. If you, if you design it for a TV and a fridge, but then you put four laptops and a heater on top of it, the batteries are going to get drained and then you're going to say that the sun is not working. So, uh, so the smart meter used to uh, measure generation and consumption also. It will also used to help us service further off clients. So, you know, for the same cost because I don't don't have to go every time. I can monitor it remotely. I can do a preemptive maintenance. Is uh, it's reduced my cost and I could service people which are further off in the market. We also got got funded from Department of Science and Technology because of this. Uh, essentially, the aim and which is still there, which is what we have started doing. We have. Uh, you know, 10 odd systems where in Delhi and Hyderabad, the people can actually see their generation online. What you want to create is, uh, we're going to create a platform. Uh, th th imagine, uh, think of it as a map of India, and uh, there are small solar s systems uh, plotted on that, and you can click one, and you can see the generation that has happened today, yesterday, last month, last year, and how much benefits this person has created for himself in, in, in money terms how much uh, benefit this person has created for the environment in number of you know trees planted or uh, carbon footprint reduced. Uh, and when that happens, we open it up for everybody to see and interact with these people also. So for example, you have put up a solar plant and somebody in your neighborhood can actually drop you a query on the, on the platform saying that, you know, how does it sound? Should I go with this vendor or not? Uh, what's your experience overall? And so this is the technology innovation we are talking about and our current customers are pretty happy about it. And uh, the solar sector, as we all know, it has been uh, growing by leaps and bounds since the new government has come to power. So what is your say on this? Like if we consider the state of affairs, so in particular what is the state of affairs in the solar industry after the new government has come into power? So a, lot of, a lot of policy clarif clarity has come in. Uh, implementation has picked up uh, 
I don't know the exact numbers, but I think we are closer to executing two gigawatts this year. Uh, overall, not Zolt Energy. So, uh, you know, these are steps in the right direction. Uh, the government has set up the policy framework, and which is a great job. Now, and it's just not me. A lot of people in the industry also today feel that the government, uh, you know, should also step back from some areas. Today, uh, solar is financially viable. Uh, in Delhi, where the tariff is 10 rupees plus, it makes perfect sense for everybody to go solar. But then, you know, half the time we hear what about the subsidy? And then the subsidy regime is, you know, is unclear. Now they've taken the subsidies back from commercial and industrial uh, domains, but it's still available in the residential. But it's a time-taking procedure. So now, to get a subsidy approval, first, you have to wait for the approval, six months. Then, you have to install the system, another some time, two months. Then the subsidy will come, I don't know, six months, 12 months, post that. By that time, the customer loses interest. You know, since the early days, we have lost very few customers to competition because we are price competitive and we are doing, we have a really good product, but we have lost a lot of customers who wanted to go solar to time. So they just, you know, they decide to wait out for the subsidies. And uh, the government, uh like uh, the policy that the government has taken by dumping the solar panels produced by China, do you think the policy uh, has been conducive enough? And like, what has been the result, the dumping of the solar panels by the government? Uh, most of the panels are being used today, unless and specified uh, as a domestic content requirement, uh, are manufactured in China, or at least the sales are manufactured in China. You know, the cells are imported and the panels are manufactured in India. Uh, it's almost as good, you know, as good as, and they're the same price, they're around 40, 45 to 50 cents a, a watt. When you talk about domestic content requirement, which is part of some bits, uh, the price of the modules goes up by 20, 25 percent. Then, you know, because it's it's a play area of only a few uh, vendors, that's only uh, specific to bits. Otherwise, everybody is just primarily using the cells which are manufactured in Taiwan or China initiatives that have been taken by the government uh, like if we consider the initiatives the policies everything so do you think that keeping all those things in mind india would be a leading market there in the solar sector in the upcoming years uh, yes that's kind of a no-brainer uh, in the upcoming years but when exactly is is to be seen uh, you know uh, if the industry can work together try to create more transparency in the market you know try to take less of the consumer surplus in MBA speak where you know you send everybody a custom code based on his level of knowledge or lack of knowledge for that matter so if you can standardize a lot of things help people uh, you know uh, you know adopt solar energy banks can come forward and start fulfill you know there are a lot of promises about giving solar loans uh, we have not still seen a lot of them happening especially for the residential customer who wants uh, to take a loan uh, you know, they don't want to mortgage the property for a for a two or three lakh system where the property is worth crores. So that's what the banks are asking right now. So, uh, yeah, so if we can work together, we can make it happen faster. Uh, see, today Germany produces more than 15% of the entire nation's power uh, through solar energy, another 15 through wind. And so, speaking about solar, they have about half of sunlight that we get. So, you know, we have a lot of, we have 300 sunny days in a year and, you know, solar is viable and I don't see why we should not get there. When we get there is, is, is the question that we have to answer together. Uh, keeping in mind, uh, like whatever you said about the banks right now, keeping that in mind, we all know that the banks are also being wary of funding uh, in the solar sector to be precise. So what is your say on that? Do you think that the banks uh, being wary about this particular funding, it might just be an obstacle for the growth of the solar industry? Okay, so let me be you know, very candid on this. Banks are also not wrong in funding uh, you know, solar or any other infrastructure project because of their uh, the experience they've seen in the last six, seven years, be it uh, uh, other infrastructure sectors. Now what's happening today is uh, the consumer is asking on a per unit tariff. Earlier there were some consumers who were purchasing or giving all the money upfront, and uh, the EPC player was selling the systems and you know doing an AMC and doing a regular business. Now the consumer has options. There are people who are offering them a per unit tariff, seven rupees, six rupees in some cases. Every EPC player who was first selling to these customers has to now go and arrange financing. 
not all of them are clean. From my discussions with people in you know in one of the bigger banks in India, they get ten proposals every week. Nine of them start with a point where the guy, can, the banker says, you know, do you think that we are idiots? You can't. Today everybody know that a megawatt solar cost somewhere between five crores to six crores. You can't say, you know, you can't expect bank to finance a megawatt uh, project for seven crores, seven and a half crores. That's not going to happen today. Solar, the prices are uh, not that variable. So this is also what's happening. So if if I was a banker and somebody gave me a project and you know that was ridiculously high or you know the customer's risk profile was very high, I would also not fund it. Uh, so, on a portfolio basis, overall the banks. So this is the reason the banks are being anxious. Uh, they are now there about you know a dozen odd companies which are doing a good job. A few of them also have you know uh, private investors. Uh, when they create a market, when they operationalize these assets, and after that they can take to the bank and say that now you can fund them. You, you can take, securitize these cash flows, and you know this revenue stream is yours now. And give us. Some money, and we execute more projects. So, as a developer, also if we keep waiting for the bank to first fund us, uh, then there are too many people. Right now, anybody who has you know put in his, put in his own money, build that project, shown it is working for three years, three months or six months. I don't see a reason why a banker should, would shy away from funding. And um, like. Keeping in mind the present scenario of this country, how does one accelerate the growth of the solar PV plants in this country? What is your view on that? Personally, we are more focused on the residential market, and what we are seeing there is what I can tell you. I'm, I have limited, you know, understanding of commercial and industrial markets. So, uh, in our case, the customer has both incentives. He wants to save some money, and he wants to do something for the environment. Uh, Till today, uh, we don't have any customer which does not care about the environment. And when we take away the risk of adopting solar power, when we say that you know you give us uh, our three kilowatt system, which will cost you 2.5 lakhs, just pay me 3,000 rupees per month for the power being produced. We also gave him the option that you know if it works in three months, we can purchase it without any interest cost. You can make the balance payment; the system is yours. So what we are doing is we are enabling them, we are de-risking their option and they are always interested. So when we go with the power plan, they sometimes also say that, you know, okay, if you can put your money in solar, I can put my money in solar. And half of the time the customer writes us a check after it. So customer financing his own solar power plan is, is the best way it's working for us. Uh, overall, we are also building a portfolio, and when the portfolio, we have backing of few investors who care about the environment. And uh, once we build a portfolio, then we'll again, you know, go and answer any of the concerns of the banks around us. Yeah, and one last question: Do you have any message for your customers on behalf of Zolt Energy? If you have the intent to go solar, we'll do our best to make it work. Thank you, sir. It was indeed a pleasure to have with you us today.